Games by Apollo Inc. also known as Apollo was a third-party developer of games for the Atari 2600 video game system, based in Richardson, Texas. It was founded in October 1981 by Pat Roper as a subsidiary of his National Career Consultants NCC. Apollo's first title was Skeet Shoot, and neither it nor the ten games that followed caught on, and the company was one of the first to declare bankruptcy as a result of the North American video game crash of 1983. Formation In 1980, Pat Roper was president of Texas-based National Career Consultants NCC, a producer of educational films. He knew nothing about the games industry, but while playing NFL football on the Intellivision, he realized that there was money to be made. Roper formed a game company called Games by Apollo, citing the name, Apollo. As a recognizable symbol of youth and activity, instead of hiring away existing game designers from Mattel or Atari, as some developers had done, Roper placed an advertisement in the Dallas Morning News and the San Francisco Chronicle. Sent a copy of the Morning News ad by a friend, a young programmer from Iowa names Ed Salvo contacted Roper to pitch him Skeet Shoot, a game he had developed in about four weeks. Roper flew Salvo to Dallas and offered to make him lead developer for the nascent company. Salvo initially turned him down, thinking it was too risky. After Salvo returned to Iowa, Roper contacted him and offered to buy Skeet Shoot for $5,000. Salvo accepted and agreed to a contract to develop a second game, Space Chase. With Games by Apollo now a going concern, Roper gave Salvo the job of director of development. His first job was to hire 25 programmers to develop games. Topic market presence Games by Apollo was, after Activision, among the first third-party developers for the Atari 2600. Space Chase would become Apollo's best-selling title. One of the company's marketing ideas was a customized or monogrammed version of the game. Though fewer than ten were sold, several were given to press, including Electronic Games magazine co-founder Arnie Katz. PM Magazine sent Lisa Gibbons to Apollo's offices to film a segment on the company and Space Chase. During the segment, Salvo made a customized space chase for her, which involved changing an explosion graphic so that when her ship was destroyed, her initials appeared. Other programmers interviewed for the piece were Dan Oliver, Space Cavan, Steve Stringfellow, Lockjaw, and Ernie Runyon, Lost Luggage. Space Cavan was the first scrolling 2600 game. It was created after Roper flew Salvo to the Winter Consumer Electronics Show (CES) in Vegas to see Imagic's new game Demon Attack. Roper had been very impressed and wanted one just like it. He gave programmer Dan Oliver the gameplay and specifications for Space Cavan without identifying where he got the idea, and Space Cavan became Apollo's third game. Apollo attended the June 1982 CES in Chicago with a booth of their own, which included the obligatory hiring of models to demonstrate its games. Shortly after, they hired Cindy Spence, formerly of Atari, as advertising director. She in turn brought in well-known advertising agency Benton and Bowles to represent Apollo. Games by Apollo is also known for having the first human female game character in a home video game. Billy Sue, a strong woman, has to defend her farm from pesky rabbits in the game Wabbit, Atari 2600 VCS 1982. Also of note was Lockjaw, a Pac-Man clone that involved sharks. MCA, then owner of Universal Studios, threatened to sue Apollo for copyright infringement of Jaws. Facing an expensive legal battle, Roper changed the title Shark Attack. The original Lockjaw cartridges had a very short shelf life and is therefore extremely rare. By the end of 1982, Apollo also moved into designing games for the Atari 5200, ColecoVision, and Intellivision. None of these games made it into production before Apollo closed its doors in late 1983. Topic decline Early on, Roper spent much of the company's money on trying to emulate Activision. At one early staff meeting he was quoted as saying that Activision had $26 million in sales its first year so Apollo would have $27. Activision had a campus with seven buildings, each seven stories, so Apollo would have eight buildings of eight stories. According to Salvo, he built up production and inventory to sell $27 million but sales didn't happen. 
Roper also bought a helicopter rather than deal with Dallas Congested Central Expressway, and hired an engineer to put it together and maintain it. In late 1982, Ed Salvo, Terry Grantham, Mike Smith, and one other employee left Apollo when it appeared that Roper was not taking the right steps to stay in business. Forming Video Software Specialists (VSS), they developed games for CBS Electronics, KTEL, Zonox, Sunrise, and Wizard Games. Salvo claims that two weeks after the four left, Apollo was forced into bankruptcy. Under pressure from Benton and Bowles, the company's advertising agency, Apollo filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on November 12, 1982. Apollo owed Benton and Bowles $2.5 million, which represented only half of the year old firm's total debts. Apollo president Patrick Ropers hoped to reorganize the company and return in smaller form, but that did not come to pass. Programmer Larry Martin stayed until the end, recalling that he had been working around the clock for several weeks, trying to finish the game Guardian. Immediately after he released it to manufacturing, the creditors moved in with court orders and shut the company down. <laughs> <laughs> Games developed Final Approach Guardian Infiltrate Lost Luggage Pompeii Unreleased Racquetball Shark Attack aka Lockjaw Skeet Shoot Space Cavern Space Chase Squoosh Wabbit <laughs>